day four of the month of Tag Back. The show where we take a look at a blaster from the past to see what it offers today in the present. And this time, we're taking a look at something not from Nerf, not from Busby, not from Lennard, Kenner, maybe one of those companies bought this company. I have absolutely no idea, but we're taking a look at something that you would maybe think is a Nerf blaster because it's compatible with Nerf ammunition. It's actually pretty impressive because this thing came out pretty much right at the height of Nerf arrow shooters. Introducing the 1993 Tootsie Toys FX Stinger Blaster thing. But before we get started, make sure you hit like, get subscribed, ring the bell, leave a comment, do all of the algorithmic garbage, help the channel grow, so you can help the hobby grow. And this is the FX Stinger. I have this blaster because of a very dear friend who sent it to me. It's something that I've never seen in a thrift store. I've really never seen a whole lot of other people with them, but I do know that at one point, probably Bobo Bob sent me pictures of the internals that I have actually lost at this time. So I don't remember if the internals on this thing are any good or not, but it does in fact fire Nerf missiles. You see, I remember the Facebook post from Fowla saying that he found a blaster from his childhood that he kind of forgot existed until he saw it and he managed to get one with the box. So why do I have it? Because Fala sent it to me. I have no connection with this blaster now, but I feel obligated to carry the torch that is the FX Stinger and all of the 90s childhood. The ultimate electronic missile launcher. Flashing lights and six different electronic sounds. Shoots foam missiles up to 30 feet. And that kid looks like he's, uh, He's about ready to go postal. Launches four missiles without reloading. On the back, a very similar story, although you can see this cool line art of the blaster itself. And warning, never aim or shoot this at anyone or any animals. Copyright 1993 Tootsie Toy and the instructions on how to use it. And it says it has two whole modes. Kind of impressive to have something like this with the box. Thank you, Fowla. And I will put it up on the shelf. In fact, I don't know why it's not already up on the shelf, but it needs to go up there. But yes, this is the FX Stinger and it looks bizarre, but it's like all of the 90s with that like cheap plastic look and yet obviously trying to mimic something that Cobra would have put out. Absolutely love it. The uh, magazine up here is actually what holds. I don't want to do this too many times. In fact, it doesn't really want to come out right now. <sighs> but holds your batteries. Four AA batteries. So you can do sweet things like this. It just loops. So yeah, if you had any kind of like toy gun in the 90s uh, that wasn't a space pistol kind of thing, it made those sounds. So you feel right at home. You're welcome for that. The blaster has, of course, the flashing muzzle with like a single light bulb in it, which surprisingly still works. The magazine that holds the batteries, the turret, which it shoots these missiles. Just kind of put that on there like that. And I did have all four of them, but one of them, while I was trying to shoot the original tag back on this, got lost on a roof. I don't remember if I ever got it back. However, it does shoot Nerf missiles flawlessly. This is a priming slide. This is a selector switch. This is a trigger. This is some kind of thing. And in order to actually fire the blaster, you have to slip it down into fire mode. And now that unlocks the priming slide and makes that happen, which is kind of gnarly, but not as cool as when you fire the FX Stinger. <laughs> It makes that really imposing sound and then nothing happened because the thing didn't rotate right. There we go. I'm gonna fire from the bottom first. And it fires pretty violently. Alignment is an issue. There we go. And it's got a really stout lockup on it, all things considered, even with that slide on there, unless you really want to break it. It's pretty well stuck on there. So a very interesting blaster. It does two things that I exceptionally love. One, 
lights and sounds. Those are awesome when it's not the only feature of the blaster, but two, it's also visually interesting because of when you're priming that back and that thing coming out and you can't fire it until that's returned forward. And you gotta love that sound from this big meaty speaker. It actually looks cool and it's reasonably comfortable as well. The grip is really just a block, but it comforts my fingers nicely. The trigger is thin, doesn't really hurt. This speaker thing does kind of get in the way and dig into your hand, but if you hold it a little bit like that, not a problem. And of course, it just looks absolutely awesome. This is an amazing blaster that honestly, if I ever came across another one that was like broken in some way, I would love to modify it because it feels like this blaster has a ton of modification potential. Those missiles fly with a pretty decent velocity on them. They don't always line up perfectly, but when they do go, it just feels like there's a lot of oomph in there. The back end of it where that, what I assume is like the plunger rod of the blaster sticks out, that's pretty big. And then you can kind of look inside there and see if this big round thing is the plunger tube. That is a lot of potential power room. Or it could be nothing. It's kind of all or nothing with these kinds of blasters, but if it could be modified to hit a little bit harder, it'd be cool to have like rear loading slots on the back of this thing and I mean, nobody else is gonna have a blaster like that. So I wouldn't wanna do it to something that's like a newer one or one that functions because you'd be ruining somebody's childhood toy, which could kind of sucks. And I have no idea how rare these things are or anything like that. There's like a whole one other video on YouTube about this thing, but it's super cool. It technically has a future if we wanted to give it one. And you know what? I think it's definitely worth checking out if you can find one. I wouldn't go out and specifically search for one, but if you ever see one at a thrift store or something like that, pick it up. If it doesn't work, maybe modify it. And to me, one of the weirder legacies is that in 1993, there wasn't a whole lot of Nerf arrow shooters out quite yet. I know arrows were like the other thing that Nerf blasters shot that weren't balls, but to put something out like this that soon that had cross ammo compatibility is pretty interesting. I'm not sure if the Tyco Thunder Strike or whatever. Hey, what do you want from a high powered blaster? Balls. More balls. <laughs> Thunder Strike 20, not 3, not 6, not 3, not even 8, not 6, 20 rapid fire shots. Balls, more balls. One commercial that has the kid, I actually have one of these things, I just don't have the hose to it, because apparently the hose is just disintegrated, but it had a big long hose that you filled up with 20 balls. <laughs> it was a flywheel blaster, in fact, probably one of the first flywheel blasters ever made from Tyco, not Nerf, not Laramie, not Lennard, not any of those companies, by Tyco. I wonder if those balls are also Nerf compatible because that's kind of like the start of the foam wars right there until Nerf eventually just completely destroyed all the competition apparently because basically the only one that existed after that was Busby because we all know we, we, we call something like this even though it's not Nerf branded, it shoots Nerf rockets, therefore it's a Nerf blaster kind of how things go, like Kleenex being for tissues and Xerox being for a photocopier. That's kind of how it works with Nerf. It's just an easy way of describing what the thing is. If I call this a Nerf blaster, you know it's gonna shoot some kind of foam projectile. I'm going on, I'm Walcoma7. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, all that fun stuff. We still have another 21 days of tag back, but I think I wanna do something different. You gotta